Wow, a sword uh, recognizing the achievement of 50 World Cup podiums. Wow, that is something else. Uh, today we are in the man shed of Steve Peat, uh, the winner of the World Cup in 2002, 2004, 2006, and remember, famously won the World Championship in 2009. He's also one of the most successful World Cup downhill racers ever with, I think, is it 16? 17, 17 World Cup wins. World Cup wins. Yeah. But guys, we are going to look at some incredible history today at Steve's Matt and Shed. Steve, should we uh, kick things off where it all began? And I think behind we've got this uh, rather splendid Muddy Fox Roadrunner. That is the very beginning for me. That was, uh, I think that cost me 265 quid back in. I, I'm, I'm, I believe it's 1987. Okay. Um, I'd rode a friend's mountain bike around in first gear, pulled a few wheelies and fell in love with mountain biking. I couldn't believe how good the bikes were. So saved all my paper round money, milk round money to buy that bike. Milk round money? I used to get up at four o'clock, do the milk round, wow, fair and then a paper round after school at night. Uh, some some quick details, folks. Uh, 26 inch wheels, steel frame, right? Yeah. Steel frame. Uh, looks a pretty big, a big frame as well back in the I think back it's the an day. 18 to be honest, but. Okay. Um, no seat dropper, cantilever brakes, uh, foam grips. Okay, uh, 1987, fast forward, crikey, uh, seven years, and you do your first World Cup race. Where was that? Was Germany? My first race was in um, Germany somewhere. I can't quite remember the name of the place, but hopefully the viewers will know. Folks, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, 94, and then of course 1996, won your first podium in Panticosa, Spain. I got second in Panticosa, yeah, first World Cup of the year. Did Tommy Misser win that one, I think? He did, yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess, around, were you actually even on triple clamp forks then? In 96, at the start of that year, I think I was on a DHO. But because I got second at that race, yeah. I traveled in the RockShox truck with Sean Palmer no way. to Nevergal the week after Tim Flux and Helen were driving. And I think they upgraded me to the one of the first boxes. Though. Wow. I mean, Nevergal, a hell of a track, right? Nevergal was one of my favorites. Was it? Yeah. That, that rock garden there. And so physical, like, like five minutes long? Somewhere? Yeah, really long, really physical. The rock garden was just so hard to get through. Everybody hated it, but I liked it. Yeah. Now, next up was your first World Cup win, famously in Snoqualmie in Washington State in 1998. Now, we've not got the 98 bike here, have we? But we've got the iDrive of 1999 vintage. We do. Um, yeah. At the time, I think still, obviously, the po boxer is now sort of eight, eight inch up front. How much yeah. travel on the back? Still kind of 200 mil? Uh, we were, but I think it was about 200 then, yeah, the iDrive. Yeah. Um, so 26 inch wheels, you haven't got the actual wheels from... No, that. that bike is not actually correct how it was sponsored that year. We tried some, um, the Atomic? Azonic yeah. wheels at the end of the year, yeah. and they ended up staying on that bike, so it's not really exactly how I raced it. But. Yeah, I think what's interesting in this era, at least, is you know, your kind of arch rival, Nico Vulios is five foot 10. And we, we didn't know about large bikes, you know, for people who are six foot four. They back just then, weren't we? large. They just weren't big bikes back then. We, yeah. were just, we were always riding small bikes and slowly growing them tiny little bits, tiny little bits, but it didn't happen fast. But talking about products, it was an incredible era, wasn't it? You know, we went, for the, you know, the box of forks came out, longer travel, more, more reliable travel. And just really interesting, I think, about that GT bike is when I, when I, got on it last time i think a few years ago the shimano brakes still worked from like from like 15 years on i think that's right i mean it's been up on the wall for a while now and, and not been down tires are flat but i think they probably still would work yeah yeah i mean that's that's quality isn't it and of course another thing hydraulic brakes came in in, in that era i mean you were in the era of the biggest development stages of downhill ever, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you look back at really old footage from back then, the bikes were more or less rigid, flexy, flexy like side to side, but not much travel. That's what I mean by rigid, not very much travel. Um, cantilever brakes, 26 inch. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, in those next few years after that, it did make some pretty it big. Did. So let's have a look what forward. happened then, I guess. So you got 1990 first World Cup win. Then your first World Cup series was, was culminated at Leger back in 02. I mean, I yeah. loved that, that Troy Lee kit you had back then. It was yeah. great, wasn't it? 
Uh, and that was on the orange, the 222, I think it was. Yeah, but then, 2000. Yeah, and I think, I think around that time, that was the era when um, you started, you and Andy Kiffin, your, your mechanic at the time, started, you know, with orange, started messing with the geometry. And I think over the next few years, this is moving towards your 05 bike, the famous bike from uh, Fort William, Steve's first uh, World Cup win on home soil. I mean, that bike was way ahead of the game, wasn't it? It was it longer, was it, was, bit, yeah. it was longer, it was slacker, it was lower. It, it definitely played a part, you think, in enabling you to win that, that race? Definitely, on a fast track like that, to being able to just talk to the engineers at Orange and say, make it 20 mil longer in the front end to give me a bit more stability was, was massive back then. That was, a, that was a pretty big jump for me. Yeah, and it's quite interesting, actually. When you, look at, when you look at the geometry numbers, I mean, we've actually done another video on GME and Tech where you look at the history of, you know, of Steve's bikes and, and other people's bikes. Is, is that bike, that 05 Orange, and you compare that to say Greg Minar's 05, 05 Honda, yeah. it is like the geometry is so far ahead, I think. I mean, I think Greg's bottom yeah. bracket was like 365, whereas I think yours was like 330 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. <laughs> but um, yeah, so folks, let's have a breakdown from the bikes and let's go have a look at some other, uh, what should we call it? Some uh, clothing. Mem memorabilia. Memorabilia from the era. Let's go downstairs. <laughs> Steve, I think your helmet collection, I mean, I look at it and you think the pain and suffering that's gone through underneath all those lids is mind blowing. I mean, how many years is it of, of World Cup downhill racing? Oh, uh, what did I race for? Maybe 23? Whoa. Ish? Yeah. 24? But it's cool you got all the helmets. Uh, this, this is one of the first ones, right? This is. That goes, well, it's got a little Kona sticker on it, but it's uh, Langsett Cycles were basically my first sponsor, local shop in Sheffield. and. I raced cross country for them. So around about 91, 92, yeah. um, I was probably racing in this thing. Right, okay, let's fast forward a bit. Now we've got your first World Cup, uh, first World Cup win, Snow Call Me, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, the Trolley D1, now Trolley was a big sponsor of yours through your career, right? Yeah, I mean, that would be 98, but yeah. my first ever Trolley helmet was in 97. I just signed for GT and Troy offered me a helmet, painted me a, a, a helmet, and at that point I actually thought, this is it, I've made it. I've got a <laughs> Troy Lee painted helmet, and uh, it was the D1. So. Well, you, well, you had. You had made it. Uh, you'd made it by this point, first World, uh, World Cup race win. And then we've got uh, fast forward. Now, obviously, you'd won the World Cup Series in 02. You'd won the World Cup Series in 04. Yeah. Actually, if I, I might get ahead of myself. Is this, is this the 05? World Cup Foot William helmet. That's right. Yes! <laughs> that is 05. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's got, I think it's got, it's an important event for me, that, that 05 race, for too. other reasons, yeah, for sure. But, but uh, that helmet, I always remember me coming down the hill and people saying, we could see that helmet sparkling from way up the hill, because Fort Bill, you can see right up to the top, that top section. And that helmet was actually like glistening in the sun. It is. I think it's one of my favourites. It's it's uh, okay. It's got an English flag on it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, my daughter actually I'm worked. English. My daughter works for the England rugby team. But uh, anyway, we won't go into that. Um, yeah, I think one of my favourite helmets. But folks, when we when you look at the cabinet in a minute, let's know which one you think is your favourite. But obviously, Steve's one of Steve's favourites. It is. Obviously, one of Steve's favourites has got to be this one, Steve. Uh, this is the Canberra. Is that is, it's a favourite because it was also a signature helmet that Troy did. So he did this design and um, actually sold that helmet for a year. Um, and I also raced Canberra and won. So you did. You did. it means a lot to me. Do you want to say, what I want to know is, did you get, how many helmets during the year did you get? Because you know, uh, I used to get, I used to get one for the start of the season. One for World Champs specifically, and then sometimes I'd get one more for like the end of the season or whatever. Yeah. So at least two a year painted by Troy and the guys, and wow. sometimes three. Wow, amazing. Obviously you're supported by Fox these days with uh, equally nice helmets. There's some other products in, in, your, in your glass cabinets there. Obviously there's the trophies, but I saw a couple in there. You've got a picture of Mike Tyson, but also you were, in, you were invited by the Prime Minister. 
I yeah. did not know about that. Yeah, I think it was it was around time when I was winning the overall or winning world champs. And I just got recognised by the Prime Minister, went down there, shook his hand and wow. got, got a little certificate. I think around that time too I was getting invited to sports personality. Of course you were, of course and, you were. Of course and you were. all different stuff because I was winning titles, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, Steve, let's go back upstairs and have a look at that camera back, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, back up on the bikes, folks. Uh, now, I don't know how Steve's gonna feel about this. I mean, we're talking 09 Canberra World Championship. Feel good about 09. <laughs> Finally, I mean, I mean, come on. You didn't want to talk about it for a few years, did you? The, 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 you know, the challenge to win the World Championship. Oh yeah, it was a big one for me. Obviously it took, well, I did that book afterwards, 17 years in the making. <laughs> I rode for the British team for 17 years before actually winning World Champs. Wow. And Canberra was the first race or first world championships that I ever went to just thinking I'm making up the numbers at this race I'm not <laughs> gonna win all the others I went and tried to win yeah, yeah that was the only one I didn't try and win and it all clicked crikey and there's the bike <laughs> folks it's the 09 bike mm. Santa Cruz v10 26 inch wheels well you actually rode with a semi-slick tire I rode with a semi-slick tire and there's a huge ding in the rim so I got lucky on that that race um, the front tyre is a high roller and it's cut down a little bit to give it better rolling. It's got 160 rotors on it there, so it's like cross country that, rotors. That ain't 160, that was like, like 100 mil rotor on the back. I think it's 160 or it might be 140 even. I reckon that, that's yeah. even 120 isn't it? It's small. It's yeah. small. There was hardly any braking on that track. A little, little bit up top. Hold on, like you braked anyway at any World Cup race? Yeah, there's always a bit of braking. Hey, what's but, interesting? Did you did you run the bike at two? Because the V10 was 220 travel. Like, did you ride it? What what travel did you run on the back? Uh, I think I stuck at 220. Yeah, I didn't limit the travel just because it felt good in that rock garden. And the rock garden was where I made all my time up. I knew I'd not trained very well before that race, and I knew I was going to lose time on the pedaling section at the bottom. So I absolutely hammered the top of the. Of, of the track and made up my time there that's why i've got a big ding in the rim and luckily it carried me through to the finish yeah. and i smoked greg minar by <laughs> 0 0.05 oh, or something right gig. <laughs> so we're still back on the run the aluminium v10 it was a few years later i think we went to the carbon v10 i think it was the year after that to be honest right and i mm. guess um i guess what we, we other things to talk about as well during your career you actually went from 26 to 27.5. I think Josh Bryson was the last person to win a World Cup in 2014. On 26. On 26. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be right, yep. Yeah. Back in the depths of the dungeon, uh, look at those helmets. That is the full history of World Cup downhill racing right there. Uh, Steve, a couple of things we didn't talk about. Uh, downhill went to 29 inch wheels in 2017. That's right. I think Santa Cruz were the first people to the party, weren't they? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It was another thing that Greg pushed quite hard to, yeah. to get 29 inch yeah. wheels put into a bike and yeah. they actually, at that race, they designed the bike around 29 inch wheels, whereas all the other people just stuck 29 inch wheels in it, 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 a bike straight it after. It was carnage that year, remember? Oh, there was, was, there was some of the top 10 were like trying to get these and it was like, oh, and like they, they realised their bums were hitting the wheel and all this. Well, so we actually qualified. Like, first? There was, yeah, th there was three riders and the, all three were in the top yeah. four, maybe. And, and then it rained and I think uh, the French guy won the race, didn't it? Because he, he qualified further down. But yeah. Steve, some absolutely amazing history here in your uh, man shed. Thanks so much for, for showing us around. No problem. I'm a bit of a hoarder, but it is <laughs> cool to look at every so often. Uh, I am so looking forward to uh, the World Cup down all this year. I don't think I've ever missed one either on the ground or on TV. Can't wait mm -hmm. to see it. Uh, exciting year ahead, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We've got some good venues, and new structure, so mm. it's exciting for sure. And one thing's for sure, I'm, I'm certain that Steve will continue to have some, whether well, you know, be Fox these days, you'll have your own helms, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, folks, uh, if you want to see more uh, content from Steve Pete on his e-mountain bike, have a look at the video we did at that very famous venue, Steel City Downhill, one of, uh, probably one of the country's most famous down races, right? So many fans. Maybe it's a small race, but it has a big following. Yeah. And if you've not been and ridden it, get yourselves down there. <laughs>